this segment that you are about to watch was recorded on December 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Matt Binder is one of the subjects of this segment, and so we just wanted to put this little intro out there so that everybody understands this was recorded before he was suspended from Twitter. We also want to say that as much as we disagree with Matt Binder, as you will, of course, see in this video, we do not agree with his suspension. Uh, we do not think he should have been suspended. Uh, and finally, I just want to say that I hope this period of timeout for Matt Binder and the other liberals who were suspended last night, whether it's a one-day timeout or a seven-day timeout, depending on, I guess, the results of the poll that Elon put out, uh, I hope they take this time to reflect upon their standard go-to Twitter is a private company that should be able to censor whoever they want for whatever reason they want defense of online censorship. I hope they get to reflect over this period of time on the fact that actually arbitrary censorship by tech oligarchs is a bad thing. I understand this is the first time many of these liberals are on the receiving end of that. So maybe this is their first opportunity to actually think about what they've been saying for the past few years. But I hope they take that opportunity. But once again, this was done before he was suspended, and we hope that that suspension is lifted uh, sooner rather than later. We have some unintentional comedy here from the majority report who thought for some reason um, that they would offer Matt Taibbi some journalism advice. So, you know, it's been a very widespread point of view on the left that these Twitter files are a giant nothing burger. And of course, you know, we're not going to, you know, play the sort of tired videos where we talk about how it's not a nothing burger. We've covered them several times. You already know why we feel it's not a nothing burger. But uh, here you had Emma Vigland uh, and Matt Binder, um, try to not only uh, dispute the substance of these files, but in this clip, they actually take issue with Matt Taibbi's method and act as if they have some advice for him as to how he should do his reporting, which is kind of laughable on its face. So Sam Cedar's not in this one. I guess he was off uh, this day. You have um, Brandon Sutton, who uh, joined uh, Matt and Emma for this segment. And so let's just take this little by little. There's a, you know, about five and a half minutes worth of video here. We'll stop and start as we go. This is, I think, pretty unintentionally hilarious. The first Twitter files thread released by Matt Taibbi with uh, as he's telling truth to power while working with a billionaire who owns uh, Twitter. Um, it, the big revelation was that there were like four or five links that linked to uh, Hunter Biden's penis that were requested to be t to be taken down by the Biden uh, by the Biden campaign, I should say. And uh, Twitter that's agreed. A, that's a confusion that many are making between the Biden campaign and the Biden administration. Um, it, uh, among a, like a thread that said both the Biden campaign and the Trump administration uh, made these requests. Right, but we okay, so this is something that a lot of the libs like to point to. We got into this on our last show. They say, well, because Biden wasn't president, Trump was. Twitter was not responding to pressure from the government to spike the Hunter Biden laptop story. And right. they're doing here what yeah. they also did right. in the past, which is is they are pointing to the Hunter Biden dick pics as the example of Twitter censorship, when, of course, the big story of these uh, leaks is that 50 intelligence officials, they are government officials, some active, some former, uh, signed a letter saying that the Hunter Biden laptop story was a Russian op, and Twitter obviously responded to that pressure. So this, I well, oh, it's an important distinction to make the Biden campaign versus the Trump White House, as if the White House can be the only source of government pressure. I mean, that's just a and, juvenile and, thing. And, and, and as if the intelligence agencies hadn't gone completely rogue under the Trump administration and demonstrated that, yes, there is indeed a deep state that acts independently, no matter who the president is, that is not under control of the executive branch. Right. And in this case was at war with the executive branch right. from day one, as Chuck Schumer himself said, right? They right. have seven ways from Sunday of getting back at you if you get on their bad side. 
We haven't heard any of the requests from the Trump administration, even though this is supposed to be a report that is uh, all about transparency. Still waiting on that. Maybe we will get those. I I wouldn't hold your breath. Um, No, no, you, you shouldn't hold your breath because the most important thing that Twitter did was intervene to spike an October surprise that would have helped the Trump campaign. So like (laughs) the biggest action Twitter took was something that was overwhelmingly in favor of the Biden campaign. So it shouldn't surprise you that that's the major emphasis because the biggest impact Twitter had was killing a story that would have been uh, very similar to the James Comey letter in 2016, dropping at the last minute. That's called an October surprise. Right. And Twitter stopped that from happening. So it was not a there was not a balanced uh, effect of outcomes here. So that's why, yes, you're going to see more emphasis on uh, their uh, sort of anti-Trump actions, because those are the ones that Twitter took. Those were the most consequential actions that they took. So, of course, it makes sense that you would have disproportionate coverage. But there was part two that was coming uh, soon. It was being delayed and delayed. Yeah, so this came out about a week and a half ago. It's a little bit old, but I think it's it's great anyway. We'll see uh, some of these points they get into. Uh, but Elon he Musk said was part two coming it. soon on Friday. It is now uh, a week later. <laughs> I yeah, guess. still haven't heard it. I guess my first question is like I, I read the first I read the first uh, Twitter thread. I, I skimmed it, I will say, and I just don't. And this is gonna make me sound stupid, but I, I'm willing to put myself out there. I don't understand what it's about. Like right. I don't okay. really. So I don't, I don't maybe get, you I don't should not be doing this segment. segment. If you are literally doing this segment saying you don't understand what it is about, you should not be doing this segment. Now, to Brandon's, I will say in his defense, he's kind of the guest sitting in. So it's not like he was. He part should of not it, be right, sitting in. But yeah, take you should not be screen. on this show. Yeah, just take yourself. You off just the screen, literally please. said you don't <laughs> understand the story that you're covering. Yeah. Well, he doesn't understand. He thinks it's a nothing burger. Right? Supposed to happen. I right. don't really understand. Matt anything. Tybee- Matt Taibbi is a horrible reporter because oh. um, clearly, I mean, listen, as someone who writes, you know, who has, you know, broke news myself in, in different, uh, you know, <laughs> industries, uh, you know, right. various well, industries. They they I started out writing uh, the uh, copy on cereal boxes <laughs> and um, I still do a little work for Kellogg's and General Mills. <laughs> I have not looked into Matt Binder's body of work. I know the last earth shattering story that he broke was that Jimmy Dore uses a burner account on t- well, uh, uh, well, Twitter. Uh, 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 Libtard01 is Jimmy that, Dore's that is, backup that's Twitter a, handle. That's some Pentagon paper <laughs> shit right there. Right. That, <laughs> that, that, that was the major piece of news that he broke. So, you know, he has experience in this field. You know, you have Ellsberg, you have Greenwald doing the Snowden leaks, you have Taibbi doing this, and you have this guy who was able to, through some very clever, uh, you know, <laughs> investigation on his part, was able to unearth to the world that Jimmy Dore uses a backup Twitter handle to defend Jimmy Dore, right? That's well, an yeah, earth shattering story that he's broken. And I, I can't prove this, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this just from the way that he said that. I, I don't think he's really familiar with Taibbi's work at all because he, he seems like the kind of person who, if he was, he'd want to get specific. I don't think he's able to get specific. I think he's just like, oh, yeah, Taibbi's a terrible reporter. And, you know, I, I've broken news and he, he doesn't know. Jim, he, he doesn't know Taibbi's work. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, he gets into he he, he gets into what he means by saying he's a terrible. Reporter. I, well, I, know, so I know. I know. Let's hear it. You know, you you lead with the whole point of the story. It's not. And this is something I had to learn, too, early on, um, because uh, I come from a background of filmmaking. That's what I went to school for. And like, you know, when you're making a movie, you have build up suspense. You know, you build up characters. In journalism, you can tell a story, but you have to lead with the whole point of the story to begin with. You have okay. to hook people and let oh, them know yeah. what the hell they're reading and what is the news here right away. It, yeah. in, literally in the nut graph, the very opening. Taibi doesn't get There's to numbers. whatever his point uh, is until like six or seven tweets in. And even then. Okay, so Taibi. They, these are 140 character tweets. <laughs> That's what I was going to so say. So wouldn't that be a paragraph if exactly. you were writing an article? 
Well, it's 280 now, but Taibi doesn't use all the 280. Let's no, just say, on average, they're 200 character tweets, right? The average character length of a word is about four and a half, right? I think 4.7 characters right. is the average word length in the English language. So at 200, wor- at 200 characters a tweet, you're looking, quick mental math, about 50 words. 50 times 6 is you're talking about 250 to 300, which would put his thesis statement, if it becomes in the sixth tweet— at around word 260, which is right at the end of the first paragraph. He's a failed grad grad of a very expensive film school here in New York um, who went then into, you know, so he vaguely says video production. And then he went into, I guess, writing articles, not very successfully because I've never heard of this guy and I don't think most people have. Uh, but he wants to come on here and explain how Taibi doesn't understand the structure of reporting. And this <laughs> this just demonstrates what a fucking idiot this guy is, because even his most vituperative critics try to couch it as he used to be a great reporter. Right. But now he's in the pocket of a billionaire. None of them try to make the idiotic assertion that Matt Taibi is lacking in the skills necessary to (laughs) report news. You have to be a special kind of stupid to be this guy, to be this guy making that argument. Yeah, well, he's not the only one here. We have Matt Leck chime in. And he here. only does that because he, he he even admits, oh, so many people are complaining. So, all right, enough suspense. It's like just not what you do as a journalist if you're just looking at it even from that standpoint. Mm. Yeah, Bender, I just want to put this up. This is what you learned in like high school journalism mm-hmm. classes. Oh, it's called the inverted, inverted pyramid of journalism. <laughs> Most newsworthy info, who, what, when, where, why, how Ooh, important. Would Matt Taibbi have gotten a C in 10th grade journalism? Oh, I. I didn't realize that we have to go. Maybe we should go back and delete all the coverage we've done on the Twitter files, because according to Matt Leck and this pyramid here, uh, Matt Taibbi's sophomore uh, high school journalism teacher would have wrote in red pen on his report that uh, it's supposed to be (laughs) supposed to be this way. (laughs) Whatever this is. Well, 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 and look, whether you like this story, don't like this story. um, Matt, Matt Taibbi has published about seven books and was the political reporter for Rolling Stone. How many books have you douches published between the three of you that right. you're putting up a chart of, of <laughs> uh, from your journalism 101 class? Well, also, part of what made this story so cool, part of the genius of the Twitter files drops was the fact that it experimented with the form, right? Right. He put it on Twitter, which, yes, is unconventional and unorthodox. That's part of what made it so cool. And so you're going to critique that by putting up this fucking graphic that you learned in 10th grade about how a journalist, how a story's supposed to be formatted? Really? Well, Uh, well, and he actually wrote a follow-up article after the drop, which we read on the show, where he said, at first, I was resistant to doing it on Twitter. And now I realize it couldn't have been done any other way because it's right. Driving, that's what made it so cool. It's driving these people crazy. Right. We're it putting took this some right in their forum. It took some risks and experimented with the traditions of the form. That's why right. it was so cool. Details, other general background info, like for instance, how Barry Weiss reacted to the news. Instead, he, he puts all that stuff up front because it's blather then that's all Maybe that really is there it's trying to think? make this give this the appearance of like um like greenwald getting the snowden files or something yeah, like that yeah and 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 look for me hey uh you have different sources for different stories greenwald uh working you know with snowden uh, he was a whistleblower so you know he's not like the head of the nsa but here it's a bit of a unique situation uh, because he's his source and he's publicizing basically who the source is, is one of the richest men on planet Earth and also is now the 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 CEO, the owner of Twitter. Um, this seems a bit contradictory to, I don't know, the elements of journalism that Taibi tries to advertise as his bread and butter, which is. The one that tells truth to power because i correct me if i'm wrong but billionaires are power sources in our society no 
I well, think so, especially when the whole, you know, especially. Okay, let me just answer this. Unlike first of the all. intelligence services. Well, yeah, she says Edward Snowden wasn't head of the NSA, so it's one thing for him to be Glenn Greenwald's source. What if Edward Snowden was the head of the NSA? Would what that make his would revelations any less right. important? What right. if, here, let me really blow your mind. What if Edward Snowden was a billionaire? Should he not have been Glenn Greenwald's source? Would that not have been a story because Snowden was a, let, let's say he was. I mean, he's not. But what if he was? Who cares? That that has no impact on the relevance of the leaks. And neither I, does this. On. And the, the third point, the final point is she talks about how Elon Musk is now the CEO of Twitter, but he wasn't at the time that all this shit was going down. So that's the point. He bought the company at a price where he's never going to be able to really recoup his expenses. And part of the benefit of him doing that is that he got access to the information and now he's leaking it to journalists who he trusts with the information. So the idea, oh, there's a conflict of interest because Musk is the CEO. Musk became CEO partly so that he could do this, partly so that he could, could he could get hold of what happened behind the scenes before he got there and expose it. So that's just in those three ways. That's just a moronic uh, bit there. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, what 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 happened to their high school uh, journalism? Didn't they teach you about following the facts? Because there's right. not one thing that you said there that is in dispute of the facts. Right. If your so source what, is a billionaire, you have to hang up the phone. That's it. Yeah. What exactly are you talking about? I thought you guys all were journalism experts. You had a chart and everything. And you don't understand that you have to follow the facts wherever they may lead. It doesn't right. really matter where they came from. You did, they didn't teach you that in, that in that class where they gave you the cute chart. I guess not. Maybe that was journalism. You know, maybe that was the next course that that they didn't. Uh, didn't they didn't take. The they class. didn't take the one hundred two junior section. year. Right. Exactly. Yeah. In the case of this story, when the whole story is about the company uh, that's owned by the guy that you're getting these files from. I mean, even if you want to just it look at it, owned. It was not owned by the guy you're getting the files from at the time the relevant materials produced themselves. The whole point just said that. Musk bought the company so that he could have access to the shenanigans that went on behind the scenes before he bought it and bring it to light. That's the whole point. It's the whole point. I, so, no, I, that's not a conflict. And the only meaningful evidence we have of tampering is from the FBI goon who was <laughs> secretly uh, vetting these files without Musk's knowledge before releasing them to the journalists. Right. Yeah, exactly. In this very slim, narrow, uh, specific case, uh, even if you're someone who doesn't believe that, you know, all billionaires, which is, you know, but take that aside. In this very specific case, there's no doubt that the owner of the company you're reporting on is the p most powerful guy in the story you're covering. I mean. mm -hmm. <laughs> really? He's more powerful than the FBI and the DHS? That, that's more powerful. That, that's, I mean, a, that's, that's a lot of power. I mean, that's a, a lot, lot of power. power. He has that much power. power. I'm kind of amazed that my whole news feed is like 10 Elon Musk hit pieces one <laughs> right, after the exactly. other. It usually <laughs> doesn't happen when you're more powerful than the FBI. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear. And Taibi states in a Substack piece that he had to agree to terms. This is hilarious. Um, in order to receive these files and report it. Terms from Elon Musk. And hmm. listen. There's a few ways you could go about this. You can look at these terms, and if the terms are something just like, you know, there is, um, uh, uh, you have to, you know, report on this on a specific medium. Like, we want you to break this news on Twitter. And you're looking and you say, oh, okay, this is some good stuff. I can do that. That's not a big deal. Then that's fine. Oh, really? But that's you have fine. to come out. Because that's exactly what that's the terms exactly were. what it was. OK, yes. well, don't worry. He goes on and say these were the terms. If the terms are something like you could only report on these certain things, then that's a non-starter. No, you wouldn't agree to those terms. Here's the thing, though. We don't know what the terms are because Taibi never discloses what they are. Yes, we do. They came out a couple days after they did this video. But now, yes, we do. Yes, we do. You cannot, again, if there were terms that were okay, like just like, oh, you know, you have to make it a Twitter mm -hmm. thread and not put it on your sub stack. Yes. Which is one the defenders like to trot exactly out as plausible, which is like, why yeah. don't you just say that then? This is right. great. And
you, did you hear Matt Lex say there the were terms there? that were okay, like just like oh, you know, you have to make it a Twitter thread and not put it on your Substack, which is one that defenders like to trot out as plausible. Which is like, why yeah. don't you just say that then? Right. We did trot that out as plausible because it was plausible because that was the truth. Who uh, the fact that he had to wait a few days before letting them out? Who knows why? Who cares? It was very obvious to everybody who actually approached this with a fair and open mind that those were ninety nine point nine percent likely the terms. And now they are. Right. And that would now be a legit term, sure. actually, if you it agree to it and you great. think the news you're breaking out weighs the medium in which you drop it on. I think that's a fair term to agree to to get those files. But you've got to disclose it, which he hasn't. They, they, I, we don't know. We don't know what the terms are. <laughs> Okay, well, now we do know what the terms are. We don't know what the terms now are. Now we do know what the terms are. So where's the majority report video saying, hey, uh, turns out we were wrong to doubt that those were the terms. Turns out the terms were okay. Are they going to put that out? Are they going to put an apology right. video yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Because well, I think well, a follow-up like is in order. they should do a follow-up. Yeah, follow-up seems to be in order. Well, I think, yeah, they're going to do that tomorrow. They're going to do yeah. a follow-up. Ah, oh, turns out the terms were okay. And we wasted all of your time with our <laughs> moronic speculation yeah, right, exactly. about what kind of nefarious terms. His defenders have tried it out be. as plausible that he that the terms were he had to publish it on Twitter. Those are very obviously that's I mean, obviously those are the terms. Obviously those are the terms. And part of the reason why we knew that those must have been the terms is because one, it was just the most logical because it is an unconventional way of reporting, but also two. Uh, we, meaning me and Russell, we've been following Taibi's work for decades now, and we know what his reputation is. He is not a hack who would agree to terms that would compromise his journalism. Of course he just, not. He would not do would. that. So we recognize that. You know, They don't recognize that because now that Taibi starts going after their Democrat party, they don't like him anymore. They right. don't like them, and so now they assume the worst about them, whether it's founded or not, in any sort of reality or evidence. Which is why, with these people, I just don't understand. What are you doing? Why don't you just go work for MSNBC? They pay better. Go yeah, work right. for CNN. What are you doing here on YouTube? You don't have principles. You have the exact same take that they have in the corporate media on most subjects, actually, not just this one. So what, yeah. are you, what are you doing here? Go make the real money. What are you? Yeah. What are you I mean, I guess they plan on it. They're they're auditioning right now. These, this is this is a very the, the majority report is a very long audition tape for these people to get picked up. Um, that moron on the right, don't quit your day job. You know, Emma, <laughs> Emma, could, what, what, Emma's good. This? She's got she's got talent. She's got she, jobs. She's good. Yeah, she could maybe maybe you know Alex Wagner's not doing good in uh, Matta's old slot. Maybe they could uh, talk to Emma. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i just i mean that was just what an extraordinary piece piece of video there matt taibbi uh, journalism well, advice for matt well, taibbi uh, right from those, from those three right right three, for those two three three, three two, journalism two, school to to brandon he was just along for the ride he didn't really say much he didn't really say anything except he didn't understand the story which means he may have wanted to sit that out but he didn't he didn't say any of the real stupid shit so i just want to be clear on that well, he was the most honest person in that report. He said he didn't understand it, and then he shut the fuck up. Fair right. enough. <laughs> right, fair enough. Exactly. Fair enough. The other two, if they had also said they don't understand the story, that, that would have been uh, a very straight. That would have been one of the best news stories of the year in terms of accuracy. All, all three <laughs> yeah, of them exactly. had just said, you know, I don't understand the story either. So moving, a, moving on. A master class in brevity and humility. I thought that segment was worth playing because we've heard we've heard so many segments trying to address the substance of these leaks, but I haven't had anybody I haven't heard anybody try and lecture Matt Taibbi on how to break a story. That's that's what I'm saying. Like even the corporate goons coming after him, their formulation was he used to be a great reporter. None of them tried to attack his skills as a reporter. Or giving his legitimacy him, as a reporter. Right. Poking holes in his form using graphics they received in 11th grade. No. no, Nobody went in that direction. Pretty shocking. Please clap. <laughs> 